Hi, and welcome back. This is White Armor Consulting, and have you ever wondered how to use uBlock Origin? Today, I'm going to show you a basic uBlock Origin tutorial to get you started. We will download and install the extension for Firefox and Chrome, and then I will explain how it works on a basic level. Let's begin. So just for now, open up Chrome and open up Firefox. For Chrome, you're just simply going to go to the Chrome store. And when it loads, you're going to look for chrome.google.com. And in here, you're just going to look for U block origin. Now, be very careful. Don't just add anything. You want to look for Raymond Hill and in brackets, Gore Hill. And it must say U block origin. There are other versions um, that are made by other creators. We don't want those. We want the official. Just go ahead and add that to your browser and accept the prompts. For Chrome, you don't need to turn on sync just yet. This is a basic tutorial, so you're just going to figure out how to use it first. So once it's installed, you can just click the X and that's it for Chrome. When you're in Firefox, you're just going to go to tools. And if you don't see tools here, you're going to go to the three line options. You're going to look for add-ons and search addons.mozilla.org. You're going to type in uBlock origin. And again, you're going to look for Raymond Hill, uBlock Origin, add to Firefox. Accept the prompt. Now, uBlock Origin must be able to read your browser tabs and your data because otherwise it can't, it doesn't know when it's hitting a web ad unless it can intercept the, that web traffic. So you must accept this. And that's how you install it on Chrome and Firefox. So let's start using uBlock Origin. Now this tutorial will work whether you're using Firefox or Chrome. I'm gonna do it all through Firefox. Uh, it will work exactly the same. I'm also gonna use my blog as the test site. So I know that there's web ads on my blog and as you can see, they're, they're not showing up, which means that uBlock Origin is installed and working correctly. By default, out of the box, uBlock Origin uh, will block malware and web ads immediately as soon as you install it. So first, let's go through the interface. So to begin, we're going to go through the different options on this interface. I'm going to explain them all, and then I'm going to explain the settings. So this big blue enable button means that uBlock Origin is enabled on this page. If I click it, it'll and then refresh. That means uBlock Origin is now disabled on this page. We want it enabled unless the page you know is safe to go to and you don't want uBlock Origin blocking that page. The first option on the list is going to be Element Zapper. This is called Element Zapper because you can click it and then remove objects off of a page that might be offensive or annoying and it will temporarily remove it for you. Just like that. And the reason why I say temporary is because if you hit F5 or close your browser and reopen your browser, the object will return. The next item is going to be the element picker. When you click this, this is a permanent blocker. So now that when I, when I click that and I click the item, I'm gonna get a window that looks like this. This means here that it's going to block this logo when I click create and it's going to permanently be blocked. I'm not going to go through the network filters or anything below the cosmetic filters. I'm going to save that for my advanced video. But if you want to eliminate objects off of a off of a web page that are offensive, whether it's a video, audio or a picture, you can permanently remove it with that option and click create. And now that object is removed. And I'm going to show you in the settings how to bring that object back if you've done it by accident. Next on the list is going to be the logger. Now I'm gonna explain the logger in more details in the, in the advanced video, but what it does is that if you load a page with the logger window open, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna show you what uBlock origin is blocking with the color red. The white is what is allowed, and the yellow is basically what is allowed and what is denied. 
I'm going to go into more details in the advanced video. So for now, this can just be used if you want to see what is loading on a page. Um, but for a beginner, you don't need this. Next on the list is going to be the options menu. I'm going to save this for last. And now we're going to move on to requests blocked and domains connected. This is informational, but if you click it, you'll get a box that looks like this. This is basically the website that you're visiting and all of the domains or URLs that are required to load that website. So as you can see, this is the primary website and then it requires Google AP is.com for fonts and then there's also google.com and then and so on and so on so it doesn't require some of these domains to load but this is what is required to load some of the objects maybe web ads um, there's a mailing list on the page so when you look at this page there's not much you can do with it because this is the basic uh, option or the basic uBlock origin mode uh, I'm going to explain what these pluses and minus mean. So a plus icon indicates that content from that URL is being permitted. A minus icon indicates that content from the URL is being blocked. You can sometimes see a mixture of pluses and minus for one URL, which indicates that some of the content is permitted while other content is blocked. The color coding. Uh, so you can also look at the color coding next to the URL. Green indicates that content from that URL is permitted. Yellow indicates that some content from that URL is blocked. Red indicates that all content from that URL will be blocked. And that's pretty much it from a basic usage standpoint. You can't do anything. In the advanced video, I will explain how to use the dynamic filtering uh, on this page, which is not enabled by default. So for now, we're just going to click back to this and I'm going to go and move forward. So as you can notice, request blocked opens up that page and domains connected also opens up that page. This is mainly informational for a basic user. Below is where you get to control what happens on a web page. So these options here, these five, will only affect the current page that you're on. And what they do, the first one will block pop-ups. The second one will block media, uh, large media elements, which means video, audio, and pictures. The third one will be cosmetic filtering. So if something is being manipulated on the page, you can block the look and feel of that page, clicking it and refreshing. And you'll notice that my web ads were supposed to load here, but there was a cosmetic um, change to the page because of uBlock Origin. So I was telling it, I want you to show me the page as is, but keep the web ads blocked. And I can just click it and un undo. The next one is fonts. So you can block all fonts on a page. And the last is JavaScript. So you can block all JavaScript on a page. So this is helpful if you just want to test out a site. So if I wanted to see, okay, I don't want to see large media on a page. I just want to read all the text. I can click this icon, refresh, and then all media icons are gone. Now you might still see some show up like this or like these below. That's because in my settings, I've specified uh, a certain size that I, if it's above that size, do not show and anything below it will show. I'll show you how to edit that in a little while. I'm just going to go ahead and return it to normal. And that's everything for the interface. Next on the list now, I'm going to show you the settings in this basic tutorial. And just one last thing, just uh, one uh, idea that popped into my head that when you use these options, this will only affect the current page that you're on. If you disable images on this page and then go to, let's say, your favorite site, if it's Yahoo Finance, those changes that you made here will not apply to this page as well. This is because this is basic mode. When you use dynamic filtering, which I'll explain in my advanced video, I'll show you how to translate all your changes over to every page. For now, as it's basic configuration, it will already block web ads and malicious, so you don't really have to do those things unless you want to, but remember, it will only affect a single page at a time. So we're gonna go into the options menu, and from here, under settings, I'm just gonna give you some quick 
um, settings to turn on. So make sure you turn on prevent WebRTC from leaking local IP address. We don't want that on the internet and block CSP reports. So under privacy, make sure all are checked. Here, you're gonna see default behavior. These are the default behaviors, but can be overridden on a per site basis. So even if you say I wanna disable, so these four options, if you say I wanna disable these as a global setting, just remember when you go to the page and you change anything here, that will override those global settings. But by default, you can say, I want to have fonts always blocked. I want to have media elements that are larger than, there's the size, you can specify a size. And then that way, on every page you visit, these will be enforced. But remember, if you change it at the bottom, that will override those changes. So now we're going to move on. The filter list. So under this filter list, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is click update now. Leave everything that you can see in my window checked on. Do not turn on anything else and do not remove any of those check marks. Under my filters. Now remember back on this page when we disabled that icon permanently by clicking this dabber, which is called the element picker. When you click it, you can remove complete blocks out of a page by doing that and clicking create. Then going back here, if you refresh, you'll notice there's that item and there's that image. If you want to restore those two items, you just go in here and you delete those entries and then apply changes. Go back here, hit F5 and there, there you go. Your temporary changes are now back to normal. Now we're going to move on my rules. This is going to be saved for the advanced video. Do not worry about this, but what I'm going to show you is whitelisting. So in a basic uBlock origin mode, what you can do if you have favorite sites, let's say you go to YouTube and you use my channel as an example. What will happen is uBlock origin will block all of the web ads that my channel will play. Um, let's say you want to support that person. All you have to do is grab that that exact URL for that person. Now mine says white armor, but it can also be, if you go to the direct URL, it might show up like this. You can grab this URL and paste it in the whitelist. You can also do this as well. You can put that URL in the whitelist. And when you click apply changes, what that'll do is now uBlock origin will allow everything on the page. It, you're whitelisting the URLs that are your favorites. You don't want any web content, uh, sorry, web ads or content filtering to be disabled. You want it to all show up and you can be very specific. So this is exactly that my blog site. But if I go to my main page, any if there were web ads, this would be blocked. If I want to be very specific and I want to allow web ads on all of YouTube, I can just delete everything here. Whoops. And all I want is www.youtube.com and I hit apply. And then when I go to YouTube, all web ads will be allowed on YouTube. And the next tab are shortcuts. So if you want to use shortcuts, you can press alt and any key you like or control and you can add web uh, sorry shortcuts for the element picker which is the temp oh sorry this is the permanent and element zapper is the temporary removal and then there's also a shortcut you can do for the logger and that's everything to do with uBlock origin on a basic level you can also back up all your your configurations right here and restore and in the advanced mode, I'll show you how to sync all your configurations over to other browsers. And that's everything. If you have any questions about this basic tutorial or it doesn't seem to work for you, please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Stay tuned for the advanced video. I'll be release releasing that in a few days. Thanks and take care.